today, I, I think I, uh, as a representative of, of our team, uh, Silk Thailand, uh, so we, we would like to, to share our experience, what we have done, and what happened in Thailand around HIE and fire, and what we are planning to do next. So we hope that our talk has something useful for you, and we also hope that we get valuable, valuable feedback and suggestion from you. So this is our team. At the beginning, there, there were six of us, and now we have eight members, like eight core members. So the first session of our talk, uh, I would like to introduce you uh, each member and talk about their roles in, in Silk Thailand. Because we are a team of uh, quite different background, but, but our background, the, the, even though it is quite different, it could complement one another. And we share the same passion and the same goal. So um, the first member, I think if you are a Hin, you should be really familiar with him, uh, Dr. Bun Chai. Um, apart from, uh, so apart from what uh, you can read from the slide, uh, he's also the father of Thai uh, medicine terminology or TMT. I think you know about it and it's the, standard value set form for the medication. And TMT also structures, has structure similar to Snowmed CT. And uh, the TMT has been used nationwide now, which really helped us a lot in interoperability of medication, which we plan to use it. Uh, we talk about this when, when I talk what we plan to do next. And Dr. Bun Chai, he is the clinical lead in our Silk Thailand team. The, Second member is Dr. Pia. Uh, his surname is really long. Normally, you can just remember <laughs> him as Dr. Pia. He, he also has many, many hats. As you can see, he's working at different organizations. And uh, he doesn't want to put it here, but he's also a member of National Reform Committee on Public Health. So he really helped the team in policy uh, strategic planning and grant seeking. And the third member is Dr. Dowler. Um, Dr. Dowler, he, I, for me, I think he's like teammate of Dr. Bun Chai. And so he, he has really involved in nearly everything Dr. Bun Chai is working right now. And, and Dr. Dowler is also like a team knowledge for Snowmed City. He's really knowledgeable for Snowmed City Snowmed and Law. Snowmed City. Yeah, so much city and Lloyd. Mm -hmm. And he's also an excellent lecturer. I mean, he can simplify and, and make uh, talk about Snowmet City and Lloyd and make it quite fun, which seemed impossible for me actually. <laughs> and the fourth member is a medical doctor, uh, uh, Dr. Gowin. Right now he's still doing practicing uh, as ophthalmologist but he's also IT geek. I mean, he know very well, I mean, he coding, he know very well about hospital information system. So uh, he's the one who designed the dashboard for our project that you will see later because he, he, he still practice and he know that uh, when the doctor would like to see the data, what the doctor want. And he's also the one who set up the file server for us. So, so you see his work later. And our fifth member is uh, Nathanai. He's a pharmacist. Uh, he, he has been working with Dr. Bun Chai on TMT since the beginning. And right now he's doing his PhD in health informatics. Um, for our team, he's the one who uh, worked on the file resource mapping and uh, test the server using Postman software. So he's our kind of our team force on the real fire implementation. And he's always be the one who give a talk and live demo on fire query. Uh, the sixth member is the medical doctor as well, uh, Dr. Rat. Uh, he got a degree in medical informatics. He, he, he joined the team later and, and right now uh, he joined our team because uh, we, we have a chair in trust. And as you can see from his profile, uh, he's working in a private hospital. 
and have a strong connection with health tech startup. So he, he helped us link with private sector and health tech startup. And he also helped in our objective to building awareness by giving a talk in many occasions. And actually one reason that our project that we, you see uh, later is successful because uh, Dr. Rat linked us with uh, one health tech startup company who can realize the interface that, that uh, Dr. Gwyn designed into a real web application. And this is our latest member, uh, Dr. Tanapop. Uh, he also got a degree in medical informatics and his thesis uh, is the use of HL7 Fire in clinical information modeling. So he has a good experience in mapping fire to the current data scheme or vice versa. And the uh, eighth member is I myself. Um, I also have a mini hat, but I think the, the most relevant here is that I mainly work and love to work with data. And uh, thanks to Ahin, I was supported for TOGAF training and I got certificate for the TOGAF in, uh, Enterprise Architect. My role in the team, um, Dr. Bunchai called it as a technical lead. So that, that's kind of overview of the Silk Thailand team. I think um, I, I saw some name of, of our member online. So if you have any question later that I cannot answer, I refer them to, to answer to you, okay. So the next part uh, is our activity. Uh, we, we call it the learning and building awareness phase of our, our work because back then we thought that there were only a few groups who know about fire and even fewer who really learn about fire. So we decided that our group would learn and share and be awareness on, on fire standard. Uh, so we occasionally talk and mention about fire in meeting conference that we attended. But the first major talk I think about fire from our team was at the Hertech Startup Community in February uh, 2019. The event was organized, um, uh, I mean, by, by the, the, the what was it, the, like the head of the, the, the health tech startup community. And some key messages uh, from the talk was that uh, health tech startup were happy and ready to adopt the fire. But uh, because the, the, the concern for them is that they, they, are, they are not the, the data provider. So adopting fire, I mean, to, to, to be succeeded in, in adopting fire, uh, the hospital and other health organization should provide the fire interface. So the health tech startup can, can build up on that. So that's the key message. And then in June, 2019, our whole team went to give a whole day talk about interoperability and fire to the Department of Medical Services, uh, Ministry of Public Health, Thailand. Um, because the, the Department of Medical Services, they, they would like to learn about this because uh, there's the national project to set up excellent ten centers for many diseases, which uh, involve cluster of hospital at different levels. So there, there is need for, for health information exchange. And then in October, 2019, in, uh, in that time, HIMS Asia PAC 19 conference is held in Bangkok. So we have a session talking about the interoperability and fire, and together with Graham Grieve, I mean, if you recognize him. So in this meeting, we kind of officially announced the CEO Thailand to the public. Uh, Dr. Bia, he, he's talking there. And in January, I mean, this year, uh, with support from ADB and AHIN, some of our team members together with executive officer from ICT, Ministry of Public Health and Department of Medical Services, we went to Manila to attend the AHIN's Regional Fire Community Workshop. And later we uh, 
gave a couple of talks at the ICT uh, Ministry of Public Health uh, in April. This year, we talk about fire in the big picture, and in June, we talk about fire architect. And we were invited a few times to talk at the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society about HIE and fire. So that, that's the, the, the phase that we try to learn and, and build awareness. And, and let's move to the next one that I would like to tell you about the fire movement and, and momentum in Thailand. Um, we can't really claim that what I'm going to say right now is happened because of our activity, but we really believe that we have played some, some, some role to make this happen. And uh, actually, in fact, um, the movement and momentum of fire in Thailand is much faster than we expected. And we are not really prepared for, for this as you, you see. Um, um, the first major movement come from the ICT Department of Ministry of Public Health. Dr. Anand, he is the director of the ICT. And he announced the ICT master plan. And in there, if you look in the middle, he declared that he would stop the development and modification of what we call 43, uh, I change to the laser pointer here, the 43 files. Um, it's kind of like uh, 43 uh, database tables that export into text file. That Ministry of Public Health require the hospital to send the information back to the ministry. And this format has been evolved for many years. I think it's more than a decade, starting with about 17 files and it's just keep growing. And Dr. Anand now, he declared that the ICT will move to file and interface for information exchange instead. And he planned that the, the health data center in the middle from the Ministry of Public Health will simplify the, the different data format requirement for various purposes like uh, for the reimbursement, as you see here, but for management and many things. So once you they get the information through the file interface and then they will distribute the data. Um, whether the centralized edit, uh, centralized data like this can be really implemented, I, I think it's beyond the scope of my discussion. But one thing that goes really well with our team objective is the use of fire for data transfer. And then come the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society. Um, let, let me call it the Ministry of DE <laughs> because it's quite long. Um, so th this one institute under the, the Ministry of DE, uh, which is the Government Big Data Institute, or you call it GBDI. Um, we don't know what inspired them to, to pick up health information exchange as their first target, uh, because actually there are many other big data in, in, in the nation which may be easier to work with than the health data. but. Anyway, I mean, they would like to work on HIE and they would like to work together with the Ministry of Public Health. And at the end, I think we at least we convinced them to, to use FIRE for, for the information exchange. So they pick up the, the IPS format, the FIRE International Patient Summary for, for data transfer. And also uh, at the hospital level, um, there are also lots of movement on this. Um, many hospitals ask, ask, ask our team to give a talk about fire and at Silelat Hospital that I'm working, uh, we are also implementing fire interface to share data uh, to with uh, another two hospitals that are in the same same chain of, of Silelat Hospital. And uh, we also have to prepare the data based on the fire IPS, as I told you, to, to share with the Ministry of DE. So this is the, the set of the information that covered by the IPS of fire. I'm, I'm sorry, this is a graphic, so I can't really change the, the Thai character. But it's involved the patient demographic data. It's also contain allergy, intolerance, condition, 
medication, immunization, and the contact. And this is the work of Dr. Tanapop, our latest member. Uh, he mapped the stroke care record to fire resources. And he found that 100% of the data in the stroke care record summary form can be modeled using fire. So it means that the fire could be used for the form that really used in, in, in clinical record form in, in real life. It's not just for demonstration. So this is the record that we really use it and we can really model all of them into fire. So, so this is the part I would like to share with you about the momentum and movement of our fire in, in Thailand. And then we move to the, the last part of my talk that we would like to share our experience of using the HR7 fire in uh, primary care cluster digital health project. Uh, we got one year grant, um, sorry. We got a one year grant through the National Health Foundation where uh, Dr. Bia is a secondary, like secondary general. So Dr. Bia is helping us to, to get this grant together with Dr. Bunchai. Uh, so the, the idea for this project is that we would like to integrate data from clinics and hospital that, patient, that a patient may visit and display all the, the data together on the screen for the doctor to see the whole history of the patient. Um, because the, the patient may visit many clinics and many hospitals. So we are to, to be able to get the data from, from all places and display it, not just uh, the, the hospital where the doctor is clearly sitting. And this, uh, the plan is that this will lay the infrastructure for the family doctor or the primary care cluster that Thailand would like to move to. And for this project, we are focusing on diabetes and, and hypertension. And we plan to implement this at the Kampang Pet province. So this is the Thailand map and Kampang Pet province is here. So the idea is really simple. Uh, we have clinic and hospital like this with uh, hospital information system. And then we will do some kind of magic or, or implementation here that a web application can get the information through the fire interface or fire API. This is what we plan to do. So the design at the beginning, um, we think that the, the, the one that makes sense most is that we're going to create the fire facade, uh, like, a, like a facade to the database of the HIS here. This is the name of the, the biggest, uh, the, the HIS that share the biggest uh, share market in, in, in Thailand, uh, we call it HOS XP. And then once we create the facade and then, Sorry. <laughs> um, so once we have the facade and then the web application can use the fire API to, to pull in the data and display it on the dashboard. And this the the dashboard that's designed by, by Dr. Gawin that display uh, the data in timeline showing the, the medication, showing weight, showing blood pressure measurement, and then all the, the, the thing. Um, actually, at the end, we also have the hemoglobin A1C or what and other data, but this is the, the engineer dash, initial dashboard. And Dr. Gwyn, he also the, installed the happy fire server for us using the container. And then not the night. Um, someone try. Do you you still can hear me, right? I, I hope that the calling here is not just to tell me that you cannot hear me. Still hear you, okay. Yeah. Okay, yep, thank you. But this guy I don't know, some sometimes keep calling me, I don't know, and the number is a bit strange. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, so uh, Nathanai, he, uh, he tests the server, he using Postman, he, and then he also work with Dr. Rudd to map the, the data from the HIS to file resources. And then he, uh, we gave this map to, to the programmer. Um, Dr. Rudd helped team by introduce uh, a health tech startup um, um, called Health Tech. I think one of the CEOs also joined us today to help us uh, implement the web application. And this is, um, this is really when we start to realize the, the impact of fire in implementation. Because when the developer, um, when they are really familiar with the dev well, uh, web development technology and also the, the health data because they understand uh, all the blood pressure medication. So we just give them the, the map, the, the file map that, okay, we map it to all these resources and then they can just go to the website of FHIR and, and, and study the FHIR API and they do everything by themselves, that's it. So, so there's no more discussion about how to retrieve the data, what is the API to retrieve this and that information. Everything can, could, could be read from the FHIR website. This is, I mean, this is the first time that we, we really realized that, oh, okay, FHIR, when, when, when it say that it focus on implementation, is, it makes things easier on, on this part. So this is the, the, the real, the working web application that when we finish uh, our implementation, it will look like this, uh, that we have patient list. Oh, this is like a demonstration data that Nat and I put it in there and then we check it on the website. And um, this is the overview data of the of the patient, this is a page of overview data of the patient. And this is the page that show the encounter history, like this, that uh, it doesn't matter which uh, clinic the patient visit, it will, uh, the system will pull in and, and show here. And this is the, the patient history about the problem, the complaint, and this is the medication history. And this is the, the dashboard, the original dashboard. And this is the one that at the end we implemented like this. So uh, the thing is, um, what the real problem for us is not the, the web application implementation right now because Fire make it easier here. But our problem is on this part, the fire facade. So this is our in initial plan. And we, we can't really create the, the facade fast enough for our project because um, I'm old school Java and has already moved mainly to Python for many years. And it, it, it took us too long to, to learn and implement using wrong fire, into, uh, fire facade. Um, but we are lucky because um, there's another project in Thailand called Thai Care Cloud here. Uh, Dr. Bandit from Konkan University, he's the leader of this project and, and, and I, I, I know him well. And I happen to know how Thai Care Cloud works. Uh, Thai Care Cloud, it installs a, da a database trigger inside the host SP MySQL database. And this trigger, is trigger when there's a new data get into the data in MySQL database and it will copy the data and put it into the transfer database here, ready to transfer. So I, I asked for help from Dr. Bandit and then Dr. Bandit is generously uh, gave us the, the trigger. So we use this system from Thai Care Cloud. And two really good thing about it is that now we don't have to go through the data structure of the host XP, which I mean, a lot of, I mean, there are hundreds of tables, but we focus on here with kind of 
a little bit transform and make it really easy to understand the transfer table structure of the Thai Care Cloud. And the second thing is that we can also use this trigger event to tell our script to pull the data from the transfer table and send it out. So this is our actual implementation. Because we can't really implement the file facade, so we install the happy, happy server, which uh, Dr. Gwyn installed here. And then we use the our script that trigger by the trigger event in the database and take the data and post it, put it into happy file server. So we 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 kind of having replicate data, but it really works for, for, for our demonstration. We don't have to implement the, the first app. We just have file server, we post the data here and we pull the data from here. So this is <laughs> what we have actually implemented. Um, once we, we, we are done with, with this project, uh, one, one problem is that um, we, we concern is the, the, the thing that we are doing is specific to only one commercial uh, HIS. And if we release this, it means that we have already created a file support for, for this commercial software. And, and what about other HIS? So we think that how can we create a system that is not specific to a commercial HIS, but can be used throughout the country. And then um, it turns out that when we think about it in Thailand, we have special context that um, any hospital they have to send the data out to about three major reimbursement scheme, uh, in HSO, CSMBS, and SAS. Um, and the one that we are interested in is the one for the civil servant, the CSMBS here, because the format that they are using uh, is called CSOP format. And in there, it contains very detailed medication that uh, have been given to, to the patient. And the value set, they are using the TMT. So our plan, uh, I think if, if you follow here, our plan is that any hospital, it doesn't matter which HIS they are using. Should, if they are in Thailand, the HIS must be able to generate the CSOP format. So we will capture at this format, instead of using the trigger that we used before, we will capture this format and then we will put it into file server or later we can use file facade or whatsoever. But this one can be our unified format that is not specific to any HIS and we can create the file interface for that. So this is our plan that uh, any hospital information system can generate CSOP format. We will create a happy file server. And then I think this will help us with the health information exchange between hospital already that when we refer, the patient doesn't have to carry all the drug or the medication they have to show to the doctor. We can just take the data from, from the hospital. And, and with this, we can also create the personal health record that after the, the patient get the, the, the drug and, and medication, and then we can send the data into the mobile application. And I think we can also create the ecosystem for health tech because right now, any health tech startup have to deal, I mean, individually with each hospital to be able to access the data. But if the hospital expose the file interface already. So, so uh, the health tech startup can build up on that. They can assume that uh, they can access the data through the, the file, file interface. And this is our plan is that um, apart from create the, the interface like this, we would like to create um, tools and library to kind of to make it more attractive to the hospital that 
uh, when the hospital provide the fire and interface, it will immediately gain the benefit of the available tools that we, we are going to produce it that, that work on the fire. It can be the dashboard that we create that I showed you before, because any hospital that show fire interface uh, with the data enough for the dashboard to use, the dashboard can be used by immediately, something like that. So this is uh, our plan for the next step that I think you will start to to work on this project in, in December. We have this up, get some grant to do it. Yep, that, that's pretty much what uh, we would like to share with you and, and our team. If, if our Thailand member were to ask something, <laughs> please feel free to add. And if you have any question, I'm really, really happy to, to answer. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prakat. Uh, next uh, is uh, the reactor uh, perspective and experience. Uh, let's hear from Cambodia perspective and experience. Or opinion, please, Dr. Sambat. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you, Dr. Prabhat. Uh, you had a great presentation and uh, such an experience in Thailand about the seal life. So that's uh, good to see and hear the good experience. And uh, in Cambodia, we don't have the lab yet, and uh, but we have the hospital database also apply in the whole country and for the reimbursement, but we not apply for or any standard yet, so that we have more work to do. And uh, great to see you, but I have one uh, question that uh, mostly we thought you talk about the data share to the fire server, but if the patient from hospital A and then they uh, send the survey at the they in uh, hospital B, do the hospital A and B can share the information through the system or so or no? No, right now it's read only. I mean, uh, the dashboard is is separated from, from the, the HAS of, of any hospital. The doctor, right now the doctor still have to open this web application that pull the data and display only. We, we don't uh, write the data back to, to the HAS. Okay, and uh, can you explain that uh, when the system don't have the fire before and uh, right now with the system have fire, what are different uh, benefits on that? Um, the, 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 the difference is that, um, let, let me go back to, uh, okay, maybe this one. Um, the difference is that before normally, uh, if the doctor sit in hospital A, they can see the data of the patient only in hospital A. And if the doctor sit at hospital B, they can see the data of patient only in hospital B. But right now, um, when the, do the doctor at hospital A open the web application and then look at the data of the, of the patient, they'll see the data combined between hospital A and hospital B. And, and, and also in hospital B, if they open the application, they also see. So it's like they can see the, the whole history of, of the patient because the, the patient, um, sometimes they don't go into, don't go into only one, one hospital. Sometimes they just visit some clinic just for checkup, small checkup. Sometimes they, they go to the hospital when, when they have some kind of uh, health problem. So in this case, um, uh, the doctor can, can see and, and in fact, uh, do they have to use fire? No, they, they don't have to. But what we would like to say is that at, for, for, for this slide, you see that there is only two hospitals. But if we have more and more hospitals and, and all of them export the, the fire interface, it means that the web application can work well with all of them nearly right away. We don't have to, to I mean, care which HIS, the hospital is using. Okay, thank you. That's all for me. Over yeah, to you. Patricia. Thank you, Dr. Sambat and Dr. Prabhat. Next, let's hear from uh, Myanmar perspective and experience from Dr. Yadana. Oh, hello, yes, uh, I would like to. <clears throat> talk about a little bit experience in Myanmar as an interoperability laboratory. 
That is the facility where the government, industry, and academia can come together to test, create, and conduct digital health system. Standard and interoperability, interoperability lab issue supports the various regional workshops to get the awareness of interoperability by providing the fire trainings in Myanmar, Bhutan, Malaysia, and Sri Lanka as well. Also establish and import in Greater Mekong sub-region health cooperation strategy 2019 and 2023. It's just like in Myanmar, like a low and middle income countries, integrating the healthcare enterprise IHE was launched by the EHIN since 2012 to solve the country health information systems and interoperability problem. For the people interoperability, convergence meeting held in August 2015 at Myanmar to discuss the country NHIS and e health challenges and ways to work together for functioning interoperable e-health as an output of that convergence workshop in the theme of the standard and interoperability. With uh, Myanmar, develop the minimum core data sets and standards, create standards working group, develop interoperability profiles and utilize national health IDs. In 2017, the yeah. Interoperability Lab Asia organized the fifth EHIN general meeting and digital health conference in Asia Pacific with the title of Achieving the Sustainable Development Goals through the ICT in Nipido, capital city of Myanmar. Moreover, one significant output of Standard Interoperability Lab Asia is the establish the community of interoperability lab around the 11 ASEAN countries were planned to establish for their own laboratory. However, Myanmar has an indicate, indicated interest in setting up their own respected laboratory and is expected to commence by early 2019. As of now, we are implementing and applying DHIS2 for health management information system during on the long will to digital health initiative activities. Interoperability labs should be a part of country's digital health infrastructure and hopefully in the near future we with the development of health data science and standard and interoperability labs should be the expanded to support a good in administrative and communication through the health information exchange in interoperability. Hopefully we can collaborate with the Thailand and Myanmar with the collaborative efforts. Thanks. That's my experience sharing from country Myanmar. Thank you, Dr. Yadana. And next, let's hear from uh, Lao PDR for a uh, perspective and experience from Dr. Tip Poton. Thank you, Dr. Pip. Uh, the first, I would like to thank um, Dr. Pasturia Pon for your uh, interesting presentation. According to your presentation, as far as I understand that uh, the Thailand had a good health data platform, and there are many sector and stakeholder involved in your activity. Such as the, I think the, the partner is really important is the ICT. Um, ICT is yeah to improve the digital health and the uh, interlope, interlope um mobility uh, day lab in your country and other country too. Well, uh, let me say you and on participant the situation of the laboratory in La PDR. Right now, there are three types of the laboratories in La PDR. The first is the one uh, is the public laboratories. Uh, did try of the laboratory cover the general hospital. For instance, in the central hospital in Vietnam capital and provincial and district hospital. And we have the specific center in including the national laboratory and epidemiology center and tuberculosis center and also the Dermatology Center Laboratory. And the second one is the public and the international laboratory, but it is the under the 
administration of the Ministry of Health and with the technical assistance and uh, from the international uh, and the funding also from the international. This is uh, mostly uh, focused on the research projects. And the last one, the third one is the private laboratory. Uh, we have the uh, four BSLT like, uh, biosafety laboratory with a uh, run the specific purpose of the some program like uh, I mentioned about the TB, HIV, um, and uh, and full of like uh, COVID. For the international laboratory in institution, they are designed to conduct some specific uh, research by um, vector-borne disease, hepatitis, and also the tropical disease. Um, it is unfortunately that uh, so far digital health right, uh, interoperability uh, left in Laos had not yet uh, introduced. Um, well, your presentation and uh, guidance from AHIN, I think is will be benefit uh, to La PDR for the health system in the uh, near future. So uh, if you could say the standards of laboratory in your country, it will be appreciated. Um, my my question uh, to you is the how you decentralize the interoperability laboratory to the um, province or district in the future, and also how to establish the network or cluster because uh, your country is really big. So and. How, how how you select the network and the last question i would like to ask you about the uh, how do you address the confidential of the patient like uh, maybe you you mentioned only the diabetes patient but uh, in terms of the um, hiv patient or uh, uh, you, you do you have the confidential uh, or patient privacy or not? This is my question and uh, my comment. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Thir. Um, for for the for the question about the plan to implement the, I, 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 let, let's say that uh, how to make the Thailand adopt the fire interface nationwide. Um, for for our team, we we think that, I mean, we don't care about the software or the tools that that uh, any hospital or any organization want to work with. Uh, what we want is just that they comply to the fire interface. We try to split this out because um, that once in Thailand they they used to have uh, an idea to have a common. Um, hospital information system that, that can be kind of universally used throughout the nation. But, but I mean, everyone know now that this doesn't work because one side fit all that doesn't, doesn't really exist. So um, what, what we plan is that at the beginning, we will try to create some kind of adapter like this. It can be, I, I don't know whether this will, I mean, our, our, implementation right now i think it cannot scale that well and we we also uh, kind of have a redundancy of the data the data i have to post into the file server to make it ready for for to be retrieved by another system so the data is uh, is redundant but anyway we we hope that once we create this adapter and we demonstrate the, the usefulness of this adapter. Because right now, Momentum is also in the HIS uh, company. I mean, HIS uh, producing company. Uh, 
uh, horse XP, they are also interested in in fire. Uh, another two companies also interested in in fire. So at the end, I hope that the the fire interface will kind of built in in their HIS, and then once they are that that time happened, and then we we already have the publicly available tool for for the fire available that maybe either I mean as a team or the AHIN member we created and try to attract people that okay if you uh, expose your fire interface and then you have all these benefits something like that so so this is our plan um, for the question about confidential right now in in Thailand um, we we have the law uh, we have PDPA law uh, to cover the the sensitive data of person, uh, it will be in it will be effective in uh, in May next year. So right now there's a, a lot of concern and movement to to deal with this. Um, uh, and then how to how do we protect the confidential data? Um, I think there there are two two things we can do. One one is about the policy, and the other one is cyber security because you you see that right now the the healthcare sector is like a target for for the ransomware now there are lots of ransomware the one recently happened in, in thailand um I'm, I'm not really expert in security that that's why um when i list here our plan in in the last slide you see that i put in the sorry i move it a bit fast here because <laughs> Here, you see that I, I put the the security part out here because it's not uh, not our area of expert. We we need help on this one to make sure that it's really secure. Whether it's sec cyber security is also secure in in the policy level, and then we need something to identify uh, the identity of either the doctor or the one who want to use the data, and also we have to make sure about the identity of of the patient. And also we would like to have the standard value set. I mean, luckily we have TMT for, for medication and soon we're going to have TMLT for, for lab, lab laboratory. And hopefully later we, we have all the standard value set for, for all the information we need. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prapat and Dr. Tepoton. And next let's hear from Vietnam perspective and experience uh, from Dr. Pam Thandat. Hello, uh, and thank you for Dr. Bun Chai for sharing the presentation. Uh, in uh, in Vietnam, uh, we also uh, to conduct uh, also conduct uh, to adopt the fire for the all our system. Uh, we have um, four main system. Uh, the first system is the national insurance system. The second is the electric medical record from the hospitals. Uh, the third, we have electronic medical records. Uh, and uh, yeah, and the fourth, the last, we have a, a, a primary care information system. And we want the four big system to exchange data together. Uh, and, and for three years, we developed the standard uh, for, uh, for, for, for system, but not follow the SL7 fire. We just developed in the uh, XML standard and it will be run uh, um, okay but now we want to develop the fire server national fire server and get data from the you know, uh, electronic medical records from the, all the hospitals and um, also connect uh, the system to the uh, from, uh, from the national fire server uh, to the, another system such as the uh, primary care um, the primary care information system even uh, put the data for the national insurance system and we now we start to develop a uh, fire server in this year but uh, i think the happy server is not problem and the issues here is the how to develop the uh, you know, fire resource uh, i mean that the uh, data element uh, data element uh, standard uh, fit to the uh, fit to the the, the, the the Vietnam, and now uh, we will try to we 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 now we are 
uh, cooperate with the better health from England uh, to develop the, uh, the, 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 the fire resources extension for the Vietnam. And I'm very glad if the Mr. Bun Chai can sharing uh, the fire resource developed by um, Thailand for Vietnam for studying is very good for us. Thank you. Thank Yes, thank you, Dr. Phan Thanh Dat. Uh, next and uh, Q&A question. And I'm afraid uh, before uh, I will read one question from the chat box. Uh, how possible is just use cause XP and happy fire for patient portal first? Um, yes, but uh, as I said, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, it benefits something, but also has some some I mean, concerned that why why do we pick up horse XP and why we do <laughs> do the work for horse XP company something like that? So <laughs> I'm not so sure. That that's why we uh, uh, Tamu Chai maybe we can add something here. Yes, I think that there is several things that you uh that you, it maybe help you understand the situation in Thailand. Horse XP is uh, the hospital information system or the software that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, get majority of the market, like 70% of the uh, mid middle and small public hospital using this uh, 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 hospital information system. But uh, the total, the hospital information system in Thailand, I mean, there we have at least 30 uh, application and all of them use a uh, different uh, data, uh, 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 data set, uh, use a different uh, design and also the uh, semantic standard or the value set or the uh, code set, or they are proprietary. And this, uh, because of our project, is to demonstrate that how we can integrate data from several hospitals and then present to the family doctor at the health center to see all the uh, to see the integrated data from hospital A, B, C, uh, which is maybe uh, they use different application. But in our projects, uh, because we only have one, uh, one year, and uh, we would like to demonstrate that uh, if we use standard like HL7 file standard, uh, like the leveling standard, that every application choose comply to this standard, then they will be able to, uh, we will be able to integrate data and also this pay data in the uh, user application like you see in the presentation. Uh, we choose a, problem, a, a province that the, the whole, every hospital use hot XP because we would like to just demonstrate the standard and we just uh, uh, work with one uh, uh, hospital information system to map out their data uh, in their HIS to the uh, fire resources or fire uh, uh, standard and demonstrate that we can integrate the data from different hospitals and show it in the application. But our ultimate aim is that we will not, uh, 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 we will not support only one application. It should be the national standard that every uh, every application can use this uh, standard API uh, from uh, from HL7 Fire or right here we use the Happy servers. You 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 should know one thing that uh, we we talking. Uh, several things in this presentation. When we're talking about fire, 
uh, fire co uh, composed of three things, three standard. One standard is the data set standard. The second uh, thing that we, we have to have is the standard value set or the code coding system. And the third one is the, the, uh, the, the messaging standard for fire they use JSON or XML. So to compile with HL7 fire, you have to the, you have to comply to this or these three standards. The problem is that do the country agree on the data set, uh, minimal data set standard? Or if you don't have those uh, minimal data set, it will be very difficult to, uh, uh, I mean, to, uh, to, to, to develop fire resource, uh, to develop the fire resource that, uh, for, uh, that can be served for that uh, uh, minimal data set. For this, uh, uh, for our project, we, we look at the very minimum data set that every hospital will, could be agree on. And those are, we, we, we choose only two components in uh, international patient uh, summary and add some, add some uh, standard data set that we can, uh, that they already sent between hospital and insurance system. The second standard that we already have the national drug code or the Thai medicine terminology, which every hospital or every HIS already have adopting it. They have to use it because if uh, they have to use this uh, coding system to send to the uh, insurance, it, national insurance agency for the reimbursement. It had been implemented for six, seven years. And that is the, the, the second one. And the third one that we do, we learn about the uh, 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 resources, how we can format or, or we already have to that to standard into the resources and also uh, put it in the XML JSON and compile to the conformance of the uh, uh, fires, uh, HL7 fire. So, like I think the uh, Tat from Vietnam uh, talking that uh, you 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 are developing the standard, the data set, and also the coding, and you get the uh, help from the uh, British Better Health British Group to extend your standard. So uh, that that is a good move. That is that that is a good move, and. You know that uh, fire resources is the international standard. What we are doing now, we are formatting or we are transforming or we are mapping our standard. Uh, uh, no, for the fire resources, but, uh, but, but but we want to develop the model extension from the fire server, uh, fire resource because in Vietnam there are some uh, there are some um, uh, data set is different uh, uh, with the fire resources. Yeah, yeah. I I think every country will we we will move that that direction also because of uh, fire only support. 80% of the business model or business workflow of uh, uh, of health in in uh, in I mean in general another 20% of the business uh, or healthcare workflow uh, workflow will have to be extended depend on the uh, uh, depend on the countries uh, Thailand is also uh, the same uh, if you remember the Dr. Bapat, could you move to the uh, CSOP slide? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You, you, you can see that in Thailand, we have the national insurance system and we have at least uh, three big national same, same. insurance agency. Yeah, same as Vietnam. Yeah. And the civil servant that uh, uh, cover around 
5 million people already implement the standard uh, data set and also some code set uh, for the hospital to reimburse uh, uh, their healthcare services. Uh, and they call this civil, uh, uh, civil servant outpatient uh, data set or the uh, CSOP uh, format. So they define data set, what they want. And also they uh, define the, the, the standard coding that like if, if the hospital use drug, they should use the TMT. So you can see that we have uh, two standards inside uh, FIRE already. We are trying to mapping or transform the CSOP format, which is not FIRE standard, into FIRE resources. For sure, we have to modify and looking at the FIRE resources that how, uh, uh, how we gonna be able to put it into the FIRE resource, creating profile and also creating the uh, 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 implementation guide. Uh, so the next move is that we are, we, we are looking at this national standard and then uh, transform it to fire. And uh, right now, our team is learning how Happy server works. You know, Happy also contain the terminology services or server. Thailand are now, uh, now learning how we're gonna set up the terminology server. Uh, we have some, uh, alternative that we might be uh, uh, employ or using the uh, already uh, terminology service that already be in the market like the onto server for Australia or the other like the, uh, 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 but this is in our learning learning curve on that. I think I, I explain, uh, there has another question that is, is there a man, mandate or law for health data interoperability in Thailand? No, there is not the law, but every party now talking about integrated data and also to have the personal health record or elect, uh, health information exchange that every hospital can exchange and the doctor can see uh, indicate data from many hospitals. So this is uh, one of the big movement in Thailand and both Ministry of Health and Ministry of uh, Digital Economy and Society are, are move, moving forward the health information exchange. So right now, because of the market need, it's not mandatory. Uh, so the, 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 the the one that mandate the standard for data to send to them is the uh, national health information, uh, uh, national health insurance agency. They have a very power, the money power to mandate them. And luckily that uh, now they use, uh, uh, we have the semantic standard or the coding standard. Uh, we have PMT for drug and we are going to develop the Thai medicine laboratory terminology, which is uh, also follow the LOIC code, uh, which is international. What I mean is that uh, TMLT is the, is the Thai favor of LOIC uh, that can use in Thailand to say, to say it like that. I'll, 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 I will stop here. Uh, I, I mean, I explained too, too long. And, and any more question or Dr. Babhat? Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Moonshine. Thank you for various uh, experiences they are sharing from the Thailand. Uh, can you, um, I hope you know, we, can we meet uh, you know, in Vietnam another day for uh, support Vietnam for implement the uh, fire, you know, fire laboratory. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bunsai, Dr. Pat, and Dr. Pam Thandat. And 
uh, before we wrap up this session, uh, we would like to share with you that AHIN is currently accepting application for MIT Critical Data AHIN Mentorship Program. And for more information, please visit our website. And thank you, speaker, reactors, and participants for joining tonight. And we would like to call on Dr. Bunchai uh, to course, close this session. Thank you, Dr. Pichaya or Dr. Pim. Uh, Dr. Pim is uh, our uh, AHIN a secretary in Thailand. And to, to all uh, the 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 audience uh, in uh, in this session, uh, we we are very happy that we have a uh, uh, secretariat in Thailand and also the uh, secretariat in Malaysia. Asurin Yasip is our new secretariat. So right now we have four secretariat that can help our network. And uh, before uh, I think uh, the the time is come. And thank you very much, Dr. Papat. I think we can we can have more uh, presentation about uh, sale activity uh, in in the near future. And thank you to all who attend. And so uh, and, and uh, sorry for uh, not be able to answer all your question. But uh, I think Cha, Doctor Pim will be collect all the question and then. Uh, 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 send it to Dr. Papat to answer that, uh, and send it to to uh, to all the people who attend in this uh, in this session. So good night. We have a, I uh, we have an, another meeting uh, waiting for Dr. Papat and me. <laughs> okay. Bye. Goodbye. Good night. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.